from the authors of Author Masterminds. This is Mysterious. Mystery surrounds us every day. Join us and listen to true stories of mystery, from human behavior to nature and the physical environment to paranormal experiences. The stories are true, even if we can't explain them. When we see precipitation forming into storm clouds, we know that rain is on the way. But this clean, life-sustaining liquid is not the only thing that falls from the sky. Can it actually rain blood? That might sound like a biblical disaster straight out of the book of Exodus, but that's just what happened in India. Also, what is a star jelly, and does it come from the sky? Welcome to Mysterious. My name is Robin Bearfield, and while you will hear my voice on this episode, your host for the episode is Adam Freestone. Adam is an amazing young writer, but he does not have the necessary energy to read this episode. I'll let Adam introduce himself in his own words. My name is Adam Freestone. I'm a talented writer and storyteller, but I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. My disability affects muscles, including those of the diaphragm that control breathing. Apart from needing a wheelchair, I also require a ventilator that breathes for me. The ventilator still allows me to carry on conversations, but it does alter how I speak, and it can be hard for people to understand what I'm saying, especially with most recording devices. The issue is further exacerbated and gets a little worse when it comes to me speaking for more than a couple of minutes. So it is a major concern of mine that no matter how intelligent or eloquent the words that I use, part or all of what I say may be incomprehensible. This is why I prepared my content in written form, and I will have Robin Bearfield read it for me. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Mysterious. On Monday, July 15, 1957, for the villagers in the state of Kerala, located in the southwestern region of India, the day started like any other. It was the monsoon season, and the sky was heavy with storm clouds, promising rain for the day. Despite the coming weather, farmers still had crops and livestock to attend to, and they headed out. A thunderclap heralded the arrival of the storm. But as the downpour commenced, the villagers noticed something strange. The rain was red. It appeared as if blood was falling from the sky. Puddles filled with the crimson liquid, and streams of red flowed through the streets. The rain stained buildings, trees, clothing, and everything else it touched. The villagers feared it was an omen of destruction that heralded the arrival of the demon Kali and the time of the Kali Yuga. In Book of Revelation Christian equivalent terms, he is the Hindu version of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They expected a rain of fire to follow the storm. But after a few minutes, without Hindu brimstone falling from the sky, the rain ceased. The villagers were so frightened that they threw away the collected red liquid. Little by little, the red substance disappeared. And not long afterward, all evidence that it had to ever fallen was gone. So what was the red rain? It obviously wasn't the end of the world. Was it one of the seven plagues of Egypt, minus a swarm of frogs? The red rain phenomenon has continued to occur in this region of India. The most recent occurrence happened in June 2012. It's a little weird it happened that year if you get my meeting. There is even mention of it as far back as Homer's Iliad, some 3,000 years ago. Speculation ranges from particles of sand and desert dust as the cause of the color or volcanic ash. There is even speculation that an asteroid burst above the clouds or a small meteor exploded 
and the pieces falling through the clouds were responsible for the color. The latter also suggests that because those pieces came from an asteroid, they may have been carrying alien life. Simple life, like bacteria, not anything that would want a phone home. But when samples were examined under a microscope, they turned out to be something far more terrestrial. The rain contained spores of a local green algae-forming lichen. Despite the potentially misleading name that might indicate a different color, the spores are in fact a reddish color. This alga released an incredibly large bloom of spores just before the rain began to fall, and the droplets gained a reddish hue on their descent to the ground. A plant caused it, but if you didn't know that, it would look downright apocalyptic. The asteroid burst theory has been discredited, not just because the particles came from the Earth, but because the reports of such events were inconsistent and unreliable. So, case closed. The culprit was algae. Well, hold on. There is a slight problem with this explanation. It was found that during one test, scientists examined the particles under an electron microscope to analyze their DNA. But when they did so, they found the particles had no DNA. If I understand correctly how these organisms work, spores should have some sort of DNA. So why don't these? Was there something wrong with the sample? Was there too little concentration of DNA for the microscope to pick it up? Or did the scientists make a mistake somewhere in the process? So, were these particles really of extraterrestrial origin after all? I guess we'll have to wait for someone to do another test and see what happens. Let me take a short break. Mysterious Podcast is sponsored by Author Masterminds and Readers and Writers Book Club. We invite you to join the club where you can chat with Author Masterminds, read free content pieces, and serialized books and buy books at 50% off the list price. You can also find my books on Author Masterminds and the Book Club. My website is adamfreestone.com. That's A-D-A-M-F-R-E-E-S-T-O-N-E dot com. Please check the mysterious show notes for links to the Book Club, Author Masterminds, my website, and other places you can find my books. Now, I want to move on to something a little less Armageddon-looking, but equally weird and mysterious. Let's talk about star jelly. Most of you probably never even heard of this stuff. Star jelly is described as a small, white, gelatinous mass, about the size of a golf ball to a tennis ball, with a consistency that I don't know how else to describe it, but a snot, star snot. Some cultures have also called it, humorously, moon excrement or earth vomit. It has a whitish, translucent color. It is believed to appear after a shooting star or meteor burst. Now, you're probably thinking about the meteor burst theory with the red rain and it being unlikely, but there's more to it than you think. Just remember that for now. I'll get to it later. The earliest known mention of this strange goo was from a 13th century physician named Josh of Gaddesden, who called it Stella Terra, or Star of the Earth. A 14th century Latin medical glossary talks about it and describes it as a certain fatty substance emitted from the earth that is commonly called a star which has fallen. That's also where it gets its name, star jelly. Gaddiston suggested it could be used to treat abscesses. Apart from how disgusting that idea is considering the consistency of this substance, he also suggested that doctors of the time were idiots that were trying to kill everyone. We all can imagine how primitive and downright crazy-seeming medical treatment was in the 14th century. But even so, I don't think we should take the advice of someone who thought that even back then. And if the gross factor wasn't repulsive enough to stop you, 
I would not recommend putting an unknown substance on any part of your body, or eating it, as some have suggested. So what really is this goo, and where does it come from? The most widely read mention of star jelly was in Fate magazine. In 1979, they published an article claiming they had definitively solved the mystery. They indicated the substance consisted of extraterrestrial cellular organic matter, which exists as pre-stellar molecular clouds. If you had trouble following that sentence, you're not alone. Even with my knowledge of space and solar objects, it barely made any sense. They're suggesting star jelly comes from stellar objects like the Eagle Nebula. Now that would be incredible, to have a piece of a nebula fall to the Earth. But it's also impossible. That's what it is. Firstly, nebulas are primarily made out of gas and dust, not jello. Secondly, the closest known nebula-like structure is the Taurus molecular cloud, which is approximately 450 light years away. That means if you're traveling at the speed of light, approximately 186,000 miles per second, it would take you about 450 years to get there. And whoever wrote that article probably got the idea from the book The Andromeda Strain, because it came out around the same time. If you're unfamiliar, in that story, a piece of interstellar material hits a satellite and brings an alien virus to the Earth. Asteroids coming from within our solar system are also unlikely. None of the accounts have mentioned anyone finding pieces of the meteorite or anything that would suggest an impact. If it were from an asteroid, you would expect pieces of it in the vicinity. More recent explanations based on sightings across Scotland in 2009 suggest the star mucus is the remains of frogs, toads, worms, or other slimy creatures. Another theory is it's a type of algae. The reasoning behind this is that blue-green algae form colonies in a gelatinous sheath. It's normally so small you don't see it on the ground. But when it rains, it swells up into a much more noticeable gooey glob. Some also hypothesize it's a type of slime mold. Slime molds are strange organisms. They can live freely as single cells or aggregate together to form multicellular structures capable of reproducing and moving about as a single body. Slime molds feed on dead plant matter and microorganisms. I suppose if enough of them get together and form something big enough to be seen, this is a plausible explanation. When you consider all these qualities, it should come as no surprise that star jelly was the inspiration for the 1958 B-list horror movie, The Blob. If you've had the fortune of never seeing that comically bad movie, the premise of the movie is a meteor crashes to the Earth carrying an amorphous alien life form that begins devouring everything in sight. Let's go through each of these theories one by one. I have trouble thinking that star jelly is the remains of some unfortunate amphibian or worm. The thinking behind this is that frog eggs are coated with a gelatinous substance, and when a predator eats the frog, they spit out or throw up the jelly. I doubt this one, because you would expect people to find pieces of frog nearby when you understand that something tore its body to shreds. There would be amphibian blood mixed into the gel, pieces or traces of flesh, and or pieces of the frog embryos present. The theory that this stuff is slime mold or algae seems more promising because both of them make something with a similar consistency to what appears to be star jelly. However, there are a few problems with this idea. In pretty much every case where this stuff has shown up, it comes apart whenever anyone tries to handle it, which makes it notoriously hard to collect a sample of. It seems to quickly evaporate if there is no moisture present. But samples have been collected by the National Geographic Society. Except 
this is where it gets weird. None of the samples they collected had any DNA in them. Whether star jelly comes from a frog, worm, plant, mold, bacteria, or amoeba, there should be DNA in it. The same is with the red rain. Are the scientists doing something wrong during the testing, or is there something wrong with their samples? Some other samples have contained amphibian and magpie DNA, suggesting they were from the remains of a frog. But these occurrences have been inconsistent. One sample might have DNA, while another does not. So even with testing, no one can conclusively figure out what star jelly is. And to further complicate the issue, this substance has a range of wildly different properties in a lot of cases. That would suggest there are many different explanations other than just the ones I have provided. To this day, as far as I found with my research, no one has figured it out. I will leave you with one of my personal theories. It is believed that this stuff appears after a shooting star or meteor impact. As unlikely as the asteroid burst theory is, there's one possibility. What if, when one of these meteors explodes in the atmosphere, something inside it has a reaction with the Earth's atmosphere, and that reaction generates a type of biological material or enzyme that creates the star jelly? And I don't mean it's creating an alien life form or something like the blob. I think that would be insane. I'm talking about some of what makes up Venus's atmosphere. There are tons of biologics, stuff that is not alive but is required for living things to exist, in the atmosphere of Venus. That's to say the building blocks of life are there, but the environment of the planet is so intensely hostile that it's extremely unlikely there's anything living there. Could something similar be happening when a meteor explodes in our atmosphere? Maybe someone will eventually be able to solve the squishy mystery of star jelly. Just remember, don't eat this stuff if you find it. Thank you for listening. You can learn more about Adam and his books in the show notes. You will also find links to Author Masterminds and the Readers and Writers Book Club in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss a single episode of Mysterious. Mysterious.